Hi, I hope everyone is well. It's Andy from GPS Training. I'm sure a lot of you are aware that myself and John are taking part in the Montane Spine Challenger South event this weekend, the 17th of June. It's going to be 108 miles that we're doing from Edale in the South on the Pennine Way to Hardrow. We have a checkpoint at about the 48 mile mark where we can have a drop bag up to 20 kilograms with spare clothing, food, footwear. But that's the only time we see our drop bag. Hence, everything you can see out here. It's a self-sufficient event, so we do have to carry everything we need. The organisers themselves do give us a brilliant checklist where there's a lot of compulsory equipment that's there for our safety, making sure that we're being looked after. So a lot of the equipment I've got laid out here is compulsory and stuff that you, you bring yourself to help you along the way. So what we thought we'd do in this video, we've had a lot of customers asking us, what sort of equipment do you take? What do you need? So it's just to give you an idea of what myself and John will be carrying this weekend for the Montane Spine Challenger. So I'm going to start with my backpack. I'm going to try and get everything fitted in this backpack. It has already been done, so there may be a bit, little bit of rejigging, but we'll show you what backpack I've got first. So I'm actually using a 30 litre um, backpack for, for the event. I do actually have a front bag which I'll show you as well for a bit of extra capacity. Now on my bag I have actually got attached a couple of things that are compulsory. I've got a red flashing LED on the back for when we're, we're going through the night. It's 60 hours we've got to do the 108 miles in so we will be going through the night. I've also got, should be attached, if I can just find it, on my pocket just make sure I've definitely got it there we go whistle I'm going to say I've already ticked this off a couple of times on my checklist I have an emergency whistle as well on my backpack so that's my 30 litre backpack that all of this is going to go in we also have a 3 litre front pouch I found this great this was John's um, I'm saying John's suggestion John tried during his training uh, runs for the event he started using this front pouch and he said to me how great it was just when you want to get this stuff quickly I didn't use one of these when I took part in the event last year and I wish I had because a lot of times you're feeling a bit hungry and if your food's out of the way you're not as quick something so you have to eat that food when you need it so having this three litre pouch at the front quick access to food and um, things like sun cream phone for emergency so three litre pouch at the front I've got some walking poles these are on a list of, that you have to take but I didn't use these as much as I should have last year and I wish I had. On all of my training sort of runs and walks I've been doing before the event, I found the, the trekking poles brilliant. So I've got some nice lightweight foldable trekking poles and I will be utilising those a lot more on this weekend's event. So trekking poles, we have a compulsory toilet kit, shovel, hand wipes, um, poo bags. So we do need the toilet kit, we are going over 60 hours non-stop toilet kit clothing wise we know it's June and the temperatures at the minute are really hot and sunny but it can still get very cold in the evening and if you did have to stop to bed down um, or something was to happen so you did have an accident we know how quick it can get cold when you're not moving so clothing very important I have a down jacket in this dry bag and also spare base layers so spare leggings and a spare long sleeved base layer. I'm using waterproof silver bags just to keep everything dry inside the pack in case we do get heavy rain. So that's the first bit of clothing. Inside this bag, um, I have actually got them all marked up as well even though I've got an idea of my own colour coding but just for when you're tired and you're quickly trying to find something. So in this one I've got a hat, you've got to have a nice woolly hat to cover your ears. So I've got a nice GPS training woolly hat in here. A gaiter, you've got to have two pair of gloves so one pair has got to be waterproof um, a spare pair and at least one pair that's not fingerless. So I've got two pair of gloves in there and my spare socks. I use a liner sock, a thin liner sock and then a sort of trail running cushion sock. So I've got spare socks in there as well so I can change them during the event. I will have spare socks in my drop bag at the first checkpoint as well. Bivy bag, you've got to carry a proper bivy bag. I'll just open this one out. There's various makes out there. It's got to be a bivy bag that has a waterproof rating of at least 10,000 and be a thermal bag so not just a one of those plastic bivy bags so I've actually got just give you an idea what sort of bivy bag it is in here it's pull it out 
this sort of vivi bag. So this is a waterproof bag, actually I said thermal. This one isn't a thermal one, my apologies, but it is quite a thick um, bag and it has got a waterproof rating. And if I was inside there and I was stopping, I would make sure that I put my down jacket on. So that is my baby bag, I'll pack that back up later when I repack my bag. Moving on to the next bag, I've got my waterproof. So again, I know it's very dry and sunny at the moment, but you just don't know with the UK climate. So I've got a waterproof jacket in there, waterproof trousers, actually got waterproof socks in here. I've always found waterproof socks, uh, maybe it's just myself, it's always personal, not the most comfortable to wear over long, long distances, but they can be a lifesaver if you do get rain. When I show you the footwear I'm wearing, it's not waterproof, but what can happen is, um, even if it's not raining, I found last year, I was going through a field of long grass on the early hours of the morning when the sun was just coming up, lots of dew on the grass, and my trainers got, my fell running trainers got soaked, so after drying my feet and changing my socks, I thought oh, there's no point putting wet trainers back on, I dried them as best I could. So just putting those waterproof socks on for a short period until my trainers are dried out and then taking them off was great. So I do have some waterproof socks in there as well as the coat and trousers. So the next bag I'm going to move on to is first aid kit. So we have a nice list in the checklist of what sort of stuff we have to make sure we've got in the first aid first aid kit, some of the stuff I'm sure would be obvious, we have lots of foot care in here, um, plasters, compi peed, I've got tape, I like to tape my feet up if I have a problem, normal plasters, antihistamine tablets, diarrhea tablets, um, normal sort of stuff you'd put in a first aid kit, so I've got quite a comprehensive first aid kit in there, I'll be going through it a couple of more times just to make sure everything is in there, so I'm going to put that to one side now. Next thing I'm moving on to is my electrical equipment. Um, I've actually got pen knife marked on this one as well. I couldn't decide where to put the pen knife. That might actually go back in my first aid kit. So you do need a pen knife in case you need to open something up in an emergency, cut something. Um, I do have scissors in the first aid kit as well. So this is my electrical bag where I do carry a emergency power pack. It's just a little compact power traveler one with the right cables in there for equipment I may need to charge like my phone. Um, GPS, watch, etc. I'm not expecting to have to charge those things out on the hoof. I should be fine getting to that first checkpoint, but just for emergency, I've got the power pack. I've got spare batteries in here for my head torch, so lots of spare batteries. And of course, we are doing night navigation, so as well as the red LED on the back of my pack, I've got a nice bright silver trail running H head torch in here, of course, with my spare batteries. So that is my electrical equipment. Moving along, we have some goggles. These are really important. They'll wrap around safety goggles, especially this time of year when it's hot and dry and you may get dust blowing around. You don't want to get any dust in your eye. So even though we think about these for winter to stop hailstone and snow going in your eye, this time of year it's stopping dusty uh, grit, sand, etc. blowing in your eye. So they are compulsory that we have the safety goggles. Navigational wise, now of course GPS training you know Andy and John are going to have electrical devices, but we still, for safety, need to carry a paper map. You can have an Orland Survey map, a Harvey's map. Well, I've got the Sacconi 1 to 25 map booklet out of the guidebook. Make sure it's in a waterproof pouch. That is important. Again, thinking of the UK climate, we could get heavy rain. We just don't know this time of year. So waterproof bag with the maps in, and also a compass. And the compass is in a waterproof bag just um, to stop it getting marked and bashed around at the moment. This waterproof bag is actually an aqua pack um, that we have a GPS training to put my phone in to keep my phone nice and dry. So that won't actually have my compass in. So I've got my compass. I've also got a GPS device. So I'm using the GPS Map 67 device. Um, really good battery, 1 to 25 ordnance survey maps. I found last year, um, even though a lot of the trails are obviously well marked, it's the Pennine Way. Um, during the day, I did use my watch quite a bit. That was fine, but in the night time when you're tired and it's dark, there was times where I needed to see that more detailed Ordnance Survey map for verification. So I have got the GPS map 67 in there, 67i I've got with the Ordnance Survey maps. On my wrist, I've got the Apex 2 Pro Watch. I've got that watch all set up with lots of data boxes that are gonna help me on the event, my speed, my average speed, how far I've traveled, and, and also a time I go and see when I stop for breaks. The time I will continue to go, I've got it set for the total activity time because we've got to keep an eye on that 
60 hours. So lots of data on here. I may actually use the watch for some navigation as well because it's handy when it's on your wrist, especially when you're using the poles. I can glance down and see how far I am away from checkpoints, etc. So it may get used for navigation as well. So that's my electric devices. Um, moving on to the sun, uh, it is going to be very hot um, this weekend. So I've got a nice Sahara type cap that's UV rated, protect me neck. Of course, sun cream, so I've got some Factor 50 sun cream there. Some tick and midge and mosquito repellent spray. So make sure I've got that to hand. A couple of little tubs with foot cream and Vaseline. So I've just found some little tubs rather than carrying the big tubs you normally buy this stuff in, just to try and keep everything down to a minimum because I've got to get all this fitted in my 30 litre bag. And finally, before I move on to the food and footwear, water is so important, of course. We know what it's like in this heat. We've got to have enough capacity to carry three litres of water. I surmise I might be carrying a little bit more because of how hot it has been at the moment. So what I've actually got is a two litre bladder that will go in my backpack. I've got a couple of soft flasks, sorry, soft flasks, 500 millilitres each. So that will give me my three litres that we need um, to have capacity to carry. And I've also got a smaller 300 millilitre bottle that I find fits nicely in the front of my rucksack in the little zip pocket where that small one will fit. And I've also got a filter bottle, so I don't know what the streams are going to be like, they are quite dry at the moment, but just in case, I've got a filter built into this bottle. But again, if I'm going to carry this bottle at the start, I'll more than likely, because of how hot it is at the moment, make sure this is already filled up, so I'm going to have over the three litres that were advised to have a minimum carrying capacity. Footwear then, everyone uses different footwear. I found um, for the sort of distance we're doing, even though I've got some lightweight hiking boots, I found fell running trainers work best for me. So I've got two pair of fell running trainers, one in the drop bag for that first checkpoint and the pair that I'll be wearing. So nice chunky grips. I mentioned they're not waterproof, just taking advice from other runners and friends and family who do these sort of events. Uh, I've done this sort of event before. They've always said to me, Waterproof trainers, we're not saying they're necessarily a bad thing, but remember, unlike boots that go high up your leg, and I suppose I could wear gaiters, but if water does get in your trainers, it's got nowhere to go and dry out. Um, so I took advice and got trainers that aren't waterproof, but I've got those waterproof socks, and these have worked well for me. So that's my fell running trainers. Finally, is the big question of food. We're all different on what food we take. I'm not going to survive on just a few packets of wine gums and midget gems. I know I like my sweets and I've got a sweet tooth. We do want some sweet sugary things there, but that's going to give you that quick boost and then you can soon come down off it. So it's making sure you've got stuff that's going to give you long lasting energy. Lots of stuff like porridge oat type based products. So I've got a right mix. I'm just going to give you a little idea of what I've got. We've actually got to carry 1500 calories from each checkpoint and have at least 750 calories that you can eat straight away. That's not food that needs rehydrated and energy gel. So I've got a big um, carrier pack here at the minute. I'm not necessarily gonna have everything here in the rucksack, I don't think it'll fit in, but I've got a right mixture in here. Everything from um, sort of protein, sort of nuts, um, great greys, um, crunchy protein. I've got various protein oaty bars. I am gonna be making some homemade snacks this week, um, nuts. Um, I do like my ambrosia custards and rice pudding, so potentially be maybe one or two of those going in, but got to think of the weight. Um, I've also got um, Hartley's fruit jelly. I struggle with energy gels, everyone's different. And I found when I've done events before, just a little cube of fruit jelly can give you a quick boost and it doesn't seem to upset my stomach as much. Everyone's going to be different regarding those energy gels, but I have found that quite useful. So I've got a bit of a mixer. I'm still working through my food this week. Um, we are allowed to stop at cafes and pubs on the way to purchase food if it's available. Um, there's a couple of farms I know that we go for. There's a brilliant farm last year, the Cam Road, um, where the farmer has a tuck shop with an honesty box and that was brilliant. And I can remember sitting at, um, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night, having a bag of crisps and a can of fizzy coke. Um, at this um, tuck shop and it, it was just great. So we have got stuff on the way, but it is self-sufficient. We can't have friends and family meet us to give us food and drink. Hence, we've got to carry all of this equipment. So I hope you found this video useful. I know a lot of customers have been asking myself and John, what are you carrying? What sort of stuff have you got? So that's just giving you an idea 
what's involved. And I'd like to say a big heartfelt thank you to everyone for your support to myself and John. We're both doing the event for some great charities. We'll put some links below um, to those charities that we're doing um, you know, the event for. And also, we've done a couple of podcasts in the last couple of weeks where we talk a little bit more about the event. So I'll put some links to the podcasts. And also, finally, um, the tracking should be launched this week. So if anyone wants to dot watch and track myself and John, once we've got that tracking available, we'll stick the link below all the various videos and podcasts that we've been doing so you can all track us and dot watch us. So just a big thank you again, everyone, for your support. Hope you've enjoyed this slightly different video with all of my equipment that I've now got to carefully get packed in this rucksack and away we go. So thanks for watching. Much appreciated.